Lynn Wilson and welcome back to my channel with At Home for Lynn Wilson. Now for my regulars that come on here, this is a little bit of a different style video. So some of you might say, what is she doing? This isn't the normal. No, it's not the normal for you, but it is the normal for me. So part of um, my journey in life, if you want to say that, is living with epilepsy. I do not have it, but let me introduce you to my gorgeous husband over here. This is Graham Wilson. Hi. And I don't know if you've officially met him on camera before. So um, he has agreed to be somewhat open about what life is like with epilepsy. So I'm the caregiver. So he's the one with the epilepsy and I'm the one that's the caregiver. But when you are married and you have a family, for those of you that are married and have a family, know that whatever one does in the family, the rest of the family is engaged in that situation. So if you live with a disability and you're the one with the disability, your spouse is your caregiver uh, sometimes and sometimes your children are, but it affects the family in many, many layers. So there's two reasons we're coming on tonight about this. One is actually three. Let me correct that. Three reasons. Number one is this is the month of November and November is Epilepsy Awareness Month. Number two, this was a terrible day for us. So it's kind of like when it's raw, you tend to talk about it because it's like current. If you ask me weeks from now and everything is good, I might not be engaged in the same way. So I thought it would be best to come on where it's been a rough day for us with the epilepsy. And the other thing is, again, for our regulars, this might not be a uh, video that you would normally watch with me cooking or doing something else, but for um, us, we wanted to be able to at least have a video in our playlist. We have one for autism, which our son has, and now one for epilepsy, which my husband has. I know from me as a caregiver, and for a spouse and someone that lives with epilepsy on a daily basis, I don't find a lot of videos out there that are encouraging to say, you can do this, that are open enough to just talk about what it's like to live with epilepsy. So let me kind of paint a little picture for you of what happened today. And we don't want to make this a huge long video, but I'll paint a picture just for today. And then I'm going to ask Graham to jump in on some questions and things like that. Is that okay with you? Sure. So um, it's been a rough two weeks for us. Just as a family, we are um, working with my parents now who are, my dad is aging very quickly and we are not caregivers in the same home as them, but we are pretty much going there almost every day of the week after work. So I do work full time outside the home. My husband is on disability. So we have to pack up the car with the family and head over to my parents either take them shopping, visit with them, have a meal, take care of things in the house or whatever. Not complaining, just explaining. So this is part of our everyday life. For me, who works outside the home, when I come home to then travel to their home almost every night of the week or close to it, it can be a little bit of exhaustion um, in there because it's just this go, go, go. And add to that, my husband who has epilepsy, and you just never know when he's going to have a seizure, maybe not even a seizure, an off day, a moody day, um, anything along that line. Then we have my son who has autism plus four other diagnoses. So neurologically, my husband and my son are kind of in sync with a lot of things that happen, um, weather-wise and atmospheric stuff that can affect them. So that makes it rather difficult in our home on a normal day. So today, after two weeks of just craziness in our life, feeling stressed out and whatnot, I went to work. I had one of those days at work where it was a good day, but extremely busy, um, unusually busy, unusual things happened. Enough where you go, oh, I just can't wait to go home. I just want to go home. I want to go home, see my husband, have a nice long chit chat. I had texted him while I was at work that I was feeling down today. I just needed someone to talk to. You know, come home, have grab a cup of coffee, make some dinner. And I come home to a smell in the house. And I know that smell. And if you are with someone that has epilepsy, or you might yourself, and my husband doesn't pick up on this, so he doesn't even know that he has it. 
There are times in the car I have to open the window because the smell is so strong and nauseating. And I don't say this as a criticism, this is facts. So I walked in the house today and it smelled like epilepsy. And what happens is my husband will get a oil and his face will be extremely oily. And this is not from not showering or not keeping clean. He could have just come out of the shower and 10 minutes later, this can appear. So the house had this smell. He cannot smell it. And I walked in and it was a trigger. And I said, oh boy, here we go. And it's a strong enough smell where it can actually make you nauseous. So I proceeded to go find my husband to find somebody that was very sharp and just off a notch when you talk to them and you kind of want to say, what, what's going on here? But uh, you kind of, you don't know, is it him being a man and just having a bad day? Him being a human being and waking up on the wrong side of bed? Um, maybe he stubbed his toe five minutes before that and it's throbbing and he, you know, is getting sharp tongued because of that. You don't know. Or is it an epileptic mood swing? Is it an epileptic mood swing that's going to turn into a seizure? You just never know. So I smelled this, I met him. He was repeating himself over and over and over. So if I were to say to him, why is the coffee mug on the table? He'd say, I put the coffee mug on the table because it needed to be on the table because I wanted to have coffee. So I put the mug on the table. I put the mug on the table a few minutes ago, right before you came home because I wanted to have coffee and put the coffee mug on the table. Now you're probably sitting there going, huh? This is how he will talk. Am I? Correct. And sometimes you'll pick up on that, right? Like you'll, sometimes, you'll sense yes. yourself and he'll say, I can tell I'm doing it, but it's like, it's out of his control. It's like an outer body experience. Correct where he just doesn't know how to shut up and stop repeating it. So he was starting to do this. Well, then what happens sometimes is he gets in a mood and he could be defensive. He could be argumentative. He could be sharp with the way he says things. And again, is it epilepsy? Is it he's in a bad mood, which, hey, all of us are have bad days. So you have to watch this, but the trigger of walking into the smell in the house, I knew something was up. He was just working in the other room. Well, then we decided to leave the kitchen and we were going to sit down and have a little chit chat. Mm -hmm. And I could tell he kept rubbing his eye. And then what happens is kind of like with autism, they get into these, um, what do they call those? Uh, I can't think of the name I want to use. Um, We'll just say gestures. I can't think of the, there's a, there's a term for it, but he kept rubbing his eye. I said, are you okay? Oh yeah, I'm fine. I'm fine. Just rubbing my eye. Well, then it's doing this and he has certain little mannerisms. Gestures. Gestures. Yeah. That he'll do that. I'm like, and it's driving me crazy because it doesn't stop. And I'm trying to have a conversation with my spouse after me having a rough day outside of the home working, needing to come home and have some relief. Well, the gestures continued and it was getting intensified enough that all of a sudden I said, are you okay? Cause I could see his eyes were squinting funny. And he said, yeah, my eyes are just funny. Next thing you know, right into a seizure. And, um, for him, he has to be in a seat in a chair for safety. If he's in a chair, and usually what happens is he just lays his head back or might lean over. When he's standing, if I cannot get him quick enough, sometimes he almost stiffens like a board and falls straight back. Or he'll take a few steps back and then fall backwards. He never seems to fall forwards, it's always backwards. So imagine yourself stiff as a board and falling completely back with no one there to catch you and not even know, knowing that you're falling back and land on your head. So fortunately he was in the chair and he went through the seizure. Then he goes through some momentarily, uh, opens up, looks startled, looks around the room, closes his eyes, lays down, opens his eyes, looks around the room, startled, starts yawning profusely as if he hasn't slept for about six months. That's a good sign for me to know he has to sleep it off. And um, so that's what he did. He slept it off for uh, maybe 45 minutes or so, got up, we had some dinner. And the next thing 
and I'll jump in to you in just a second. Okay. The next thing he said um, was, okay, well, actually, I called him. He got up and he walked into the kitchen and I said, what are you doing? Like, I'm ready to finish my conversation here. In my mind, like, we were in the middle of a conversation and he interrupted me with a seizure and I want to finish. I want to talk. And he went in the kitchen and he started, you know, doing a few things. And I said, well, are you done? Can you come sit? And, oh, yeah, yeah, I can sit. So he sat down and then he said, I'll be right back. Well, to try and fast forward this a little bit, he went upstairs and he put on a fresh shirt, combed his hair, washed his face, and used essential oils. Now, we do use a CD, CB, C, C, what had he CBD. say? CBD. CBD oil cream. We don't ingest it. Um, we have a topical cream that we've gotten from our doctor. I know that's, you know, everybody has their opinion on that. And we also use essential oils. We do have a neurologist. We have a specialized neurologist for just epilepsy. All that, he's on medication. We go the whole gamut of natural, I mean medical because of the pills he needs, but we also balance it out with natural. So he wouldn't put on clary sage. Mm -hmm. Is that what you put on? Yep. Mm -hmm. Which is, so it seems to be the number one oil that really helps him. And um, some, how do you say it? C? CBD. CBD. I'll get this right. <laughs> After the video, I'll know how to say it. Um, he put that on as well. Within five minutes, I had my normal husband back. Which then allowed me to finish what I needed to tell him and basically dump on him about my day but also in turn allowed me to have a window of time to explain, do you know what you acted like? Do you know how you were? Do you know how you turned this family upside down? And there are storms right now. Now we're in New Jersey. There are storms in the Caribbean, hurricane season coming up through the East Coast. Florida is a thousand plus miles away from us. Caribbean's even further than that, a couple thousand miles. But believe it or not, it's not when the storm comes to New Jersey. It's thousands of miles away, whatever it does to the atmospheric pressure, all that turmoil in the air comes all the way up through to New Jersey and affects people who have epilepsy. Now, I can't speak for all. I can't speak for people who have just seizure disorders. My husband has epilepsy, which is not curable. It's manageable, but it's not curable. Seizure disorder, a lot of people can be cured. My husband cannot. On a good day, he'll seizure once to twice a day, little ones. On a bad day, he can seizure 20 little ones to mm -hmm. seven to eight big ones. So we live with this on a daily basis, just some days are more intense. So I wanted you to understand kind of where we're at and where I am as a caregiver that here I needed my husband and he wasn't there for me. But then all the things that came into it, the mood swings, the smell, I don't know if anyone's out there that either has epilepsy or you're a caregiver to someone. Are any of these things common in your home? Leave a comment below. We would love to hear from you because it's just nice to have that support out there to say, hey, I got it. We go through the same thing. Now, Graham, when we were talking, round two, when we were talking, and I said to you, you just got up and you left and you went in the kitchen and I kind of... I don't want to say he took offense to that, but like, hey, a time out here. I'm talking. You get up and you just walked out. And I said to you, like, did you not know we were talking? Did you not know we were in the middle of a conversation? And then you went on to tell me how you needed to keep your hands busy and you became very defensive. Correct. Can you kind of explain to me? Well, part of it is that you, I have a... Um my body almost has to reorientate itself into... Uh, kind of like a reboot? Yeah, reboot. What, what was I working on prior to what I what I was... So go back to where you were. Back to where I was. Because, okay. it, you know, it's that feeling of uh, the record skipped. And I... And I yeah, you've to, said that many times. Like, yeah, you felt like you skipped a beat. You skipped a beat. And I, I have to go back to where I was. And, and then I... Okay. Um... So then I, like I said, I, I went in the kitchen and I, I start getting my hands busy or something like that. But what's the other thing that you said to me that when you went in there, you could feel yourself defensive? Right. Because, you know, you were saying, talking about the fact of 
um, you wanted to talk about uh, a problem and it was more the fact that uh, my body when it is in that uh, time is actually more in the defensive mode and it's not you haven't become defensive not, not your directed, body just is in that mode not def, not directed at any one person it it's actually it's it's actually just for itself defending itself okay okay do you sense that like when you're in the middle of if i ask you a question and you become defensive of well i put the mug there for a reason and you you kind of get sharp about it do you can you sense yourself like i know sometimes with be honest with women with pms you sometimes will lash out and you'll go who was that like you hear yourself saying it but your, your other side of your brain is almost like I can't believe I just did that, but you don't know how to connect the two. Do yes, you feel that I, way? I, I do sometimes, and that's why sometimes I might actually draw away from people uh, because I, I would rather just go and sit in the other room or something. Sort of regroup and yeah, until I and until I'm things have settled. Okay, that makes sense. So for us, we've had, our oldest son is 31 and married and out of the house. But there are times where he has said to me, oh, mom, like he'll, he'll know something's going on and it'll be this flashback for him of all the years he grew up with his dad with having seizures. Now our youngest son is home and it's funny, they handle it differently. My oldest son is very deep, keeps things to himself and once in a while we'll talk. My youngest son has um, his own special needs and disabilities he deals with. But I think even putting that aside, I think Gavin's personality, Graham's personality is more internal. Gavin's is more external. Right. And Gavin's very blunt and he'll just say, did he have another seizure? What are we going to do about it? And he'll, right. the problem with that is he is so blunt. He'll say, what's dad doing? What's going on? And talk to me about my husband as if Graham's not in the room, Gavin doesn't mean to do that. I think that's part of the autism coming into it. Correct. Plus his personality is very blunt and outgoing. So you mix the two of them together mm -hmm. and that has set you off. And that only puts me more on the defensive. More defensive. Correct. And so then you become more agitated and snapping. And right. And that's why I've, uh, very, a lot of times will make a point of going out of the room when he when he becomes in that questioning you just need to get space and breathe yeah. so knowing that um a husband head of the house all those manly roles that most men sort of once you get married take on um you worked for many years my husband was a phlebotomist he worked uh went to school for x-ray technician um did landscaping for a while i mean you did some some physical labor mm -hmm. as well as some a lot of medical and just uh intense type work right for years and then you had to step back and go on full-time disability and now you are the homemaker right. in a sense um homeschooler he homeschools the kids because he's been home i have to go to work so we've had role reversal in some way mm -hmm. and at least from my opinion, when we first did this, I was super excited because I love working outside the home. I can make a list of what needs to get done in the home, but I get extremely overwhelmed when the dishes are in the sink and I freak out. Where my husband can walk in and see the dishes in the sink and go, okay, let's get them done very calmly. Where I can make a list of all the things they want done, but actually doing them, I'm a wreck. Where you, are the opposite you're Correct. not good with the making the list but if you you he'll say to me in the morning you got my list but if I make you a list you can tackle it right but when we first started the journey of you being on full-time disability as a man how did that affect you it I, there was a time when I actually um, there was that period of time where I actually went into depression that was about two years about two years because I had to 
totally flip flop. Um, create a new, I hate the word new norm. That I just, it just goes to, I just don't like it. But really, that's what you had to do. That's a really new what I had to do. But now that you're in it, do you find that our life is good? Oh, it's much better. Like we were actually almost, I don't want to say destined, but you work better. You, he, 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 not me, he runs the home. Like if I give him a list, he can run this home better than I can 10 times better than I could ever. I'm not good with that. I can do the list. I can go at work. I can organize the social calendar. I can make the grocery list. I can do, I can do. I get so overwhelmed when the house is out of order. Mm -hmm. But you look at it and he'll say, okay, I'm going to take one room at a time. We'll get the dishes done. We're going to put a load of wash on and so on. And you are really okay with that. Yeah, I, I have no problem with that. You know, because the problem is with with men is that um, you, you base your self-worth on your job. Absolutely. And all of a sudden, all of my self-worth was taken away. Right. Or what you knew what it to I be. Knew it to be. And then people like, I mean, what do people say? So what do you do for a living? That's a. That's it. That's your kind of when you don't know what to talk that, to. That's somebody your first about. question. Hi, how are you? How are the kids? How's the wife? So what are you doing now? Right. Well, uh, I stay at home. I stay at home. So that took a. I think that caused a lot of the depression of. Yeah. Who is my self worth? And even family. Now? Right. Yeah. 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 Family. Now. If you have, if you have any kind of disability, epilepsy or anything, I'm sure you can vouch for me. And again, leave a comment below. We would love to hear from you. They think, family thinks they understand. They have no clue. So I'm sure, I know some of our family will be watching this. I know that. We love you. Please don't take offense, but know that you don't have a clue. People don't understand when I say to them, it's been a bad day. Well, we all have bad days. No, 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 no. You don't understand what a bad day is until you have experienced a life with someone with a disability. Now, I am not saying you cannot live life. Do we live life? No, we live life. Let me tell you one thing about my husband. I freak out, get nervous, see the dark side, can't handle, and all the rest. And he's like, what's the problem? So it's raining outside, we'll do something inside. He tends to, and I think that's part of your personality, normal, yeah. like if you mm -hmm. took epilepsy out of it. But I think the other part is you've had to learn to adapt. I, I you've have, had to be flexible. I have, my personality has learned to see the silver lining in, in, in every situation. So with him always doing that, I remember we moved into a um, very tiny apartment when he was going to school, back to college for x-ray tech. The place was a dump. It was horrible. And it was a tiny, tiny little apartment. And he went in there and he said, ah, oh, no problem. He got on his hands and knees and he waxed the floors. It was hardwood floors. And he touched up the paint the best he could. And we put baskets. We had no money. We were beyond broker than broke. I mean, we had no money. And we had these baskets someone gave us that were like bread baskets. And he put thumbtacks all the way around the room. And we just hung them like a border around the room just to add something. My husband transformed this dumpy apartment within 24 hours into a home. I was a wreck. I couldn't concentrate. Graham has always been one to just make it work. We're going to make it work. He loves life. He enjoys life. And I think he enjoys life even more so because the moments that he has where you can enjoy it, he has to enjoy it because there's going to be moments that you can't. Right, right, exactly. So that's that's one thing rule that I have always done is like uh, all along the way, I have had to figure out a way to make it work. Yes, that's a good way of saying it. Graham has never been one. Graham has never, ever, that I can remember, quit anything. I, I'm the first one to say in the family, we're done. That's it. I've had it. We're done. And he's like, no, we're not done. We're going to keep going. Um, you've taught our boys that, both mm -hmm. of our boys. Our oldest son, again, is 31. Growing up with his dad was very rough. Um, I'm sure there's things he still doesn't talk about. You know, we all have 
you want to say hang ups and things like that, we all have them. Life is not perfect. But I can say now that he's married, his wife will come and say to me, you have no idea the respect that your son has for your husband. And I think he watched his dad. I think he watched you um, loving his kids in the best way he could, making ends meet the best way he could, working the to the best of his ability in amongst having seizures at work. I mean, there would be days I'd have to pick him at work because the boss would call and say, Graham just fell and had a seizure. Um, we have been through many hospital visits from dislocated bones and fingers and shoulders to broken ribs to slicing off the top of the ear to falling off of a 10, 12 foot ladder, mm -hmm. holding a large piece of lattice I used to decorate, I guess is the best way to explain it, for large events, and he was helping me. We didn't know that people with epilepsy... No, nobody told us. ...can be on a ladder, and being on a ladder can cause a seizure. Heights cause seizures. We didn't know this. He's on a ladder holding a piece of this gigantic, you know, gigantic lit lattice. Fell. Nobody was... Like, you're right there. You're like, you think I could have caught him, but we were all right there. He fell. The lattice, like, literally went into his hand and, like, cut his, like, he had the, the imprint of the lattice, but the lattice was in, rushed him to the hospital. So we have been through the gamut. And our kids have either seen it, mm -hmm. found him, had to call me. One time, my husband fell down the stairs, stopped breathing. I was at an event. I, my son called me. And I didn't answer the phone because I was with a guest, but all I could hear when I picked up and I listened to the voicemail, we had a bird and I could hear the bird chirping in the background with dead silence. And I knew something was wrong at home. Well, my son called me to say, dad fell down the stairs, but at that point he wasn't breathing. So he had to hang up the phone. He got his dad breathing. It, you know, just all those horrid moments for our kids. And yet, the love and respect they have for their dad. And I think it has been from the example my husband has set, and I'm speaking for you but right, and right. the kids, don't quit, find a way to make it work, do what you have to do, enjoy every moment of every day because that's the only moment we have. We have right now. I don't have a minute before because that's over and I don't have the minute in front of me because I don't know if that's gonna come. All I have is the minute that I'm in right at this very moment. And I think my husband has lived those words and those statements. He's lived his faith. My husband is a very strong believer in the Lord and he claims verses in the Bible that has sustained him right. and has proven to his children that this is not something that we just talk about. Like this is something we live. And I think that has built a foundation for both of our kids to realize that mom and dad's faith is strong and we stand firm on that. And then they've just watched their dad be a strong man. I mean, my husband is blessed so many. He does counseling for an addiction recovery ministry and the guys come to our home and he can tell them, listen, I know what it is not to drive. I know what it is have to have to give up my driver's license. Some of these guys, because of their addiction and their lifestyle and jail time and whatever, DWIs, have lost their driver's license. Usually it's not forever. It's for a period of time. My husband's lost it forever. He can tell them, I know what it is to be a husband and a father and not drive. I know what it is to have to depend on somebody where when he wants to go Christmas shopping for his wife, what does he say? Honey, can you take me shopping? I need to go buy you a present. That, that you know, it kind of takes away from the moment. We've now learned, here's a budget. Here's all the stores online, which we now have that advantage. That's right. 20, 30 years ago, it wasn't like that. But now he can go, can I, you know, Kohl's, Amazon, JCPenney, Boscov's, right. whoever. And pretty much anybody. Um, listen, if he can just do Hobby Lobby and Michael's Crafts, <laughs> we're good. But he can go on any website and order gifts for me now. He can he can order wrapping paper. He can do whatever he wants. Now when we go shopping, we'll divide and conquer. Okay, you go this way. I'll go that way. We meet in the middle. We've had to go to getting a scooter so yes. that when we go shopping, I don't have to worry about him 
collapsing on the floor and me cleaning up the mess. He's been in a scooter. I find him five aisles down, hunched over in the scooter, mm -hmm. having a seizure. But at least he's in a chair and he's safe. Um, what else can we tell you guys? Told you about family. The storms that are coming up the East Coast, that atmospheric pressure that's building, that's affecting his who wires in his brain and screwing it all up. That's one kind of storm. We always talk about weather and the storms in the house. Those storms that are down south that are coming up have caused a storm in our home. Yeah. And tonight was one of those nights. I said to my husband, I want to pack up my little bag. And I want to go right back to work. I don't want to be here. He smells funny. He acts funny. He talks and repeats himself. Um, he's not my husband. And if you're a spouse or a caregiver of your partner, you know what I'm talking about. The touch of their hand, all of a sudden you feel like that's somebody else's hand that you're touching. Their whole personality, their, their inners, their, I don't even know how to explain it. If you're on the other side of it, you know what I mean. Um, them coming out of this, how do you then, for me, I struggle with, okay, I now need to be his caregiver and take care of him. There were times I've had to feed him because I knew his sugar level dropped or he needed to eat, he needed protein, but he could not unwrap something or hold it. His hands were shaking so much. So I'm having to feed him a cheese stick or mm -hmm. something, but to give him enough dignity to know that, hey, it's cool, just giving you a cheese stick, it's all good. I can't imagine being on the other side of that and you feeding me and me not feeling awkward, stupid, right. something. You know. The, it's it's hard, uh, you know, those times to to just know that it's temporary. Yeah, and, you almost have to. You've you've taught me this. My husband worked in the medical field, and he said there were times where things were awkward, weird. You had to see things that you know you don't normally see on people or whatever. And he said you put on your medical brain, and you became very clinical. Right. And you did what you had to do. You have to bathe somebody. You, you bathe them in all their parts. And you just do what you have to do for the time that it is. And then you move on and that's it. And you become clinical. You almost remove yourself from it so that they can feel removed from it. The job needs to get done. The job is done. That's the end of it. Um, and you've said that. And I think that's right. helped me. Like, okay, I need to feed you. He knows he needs to be fed because he has to get that protein in him. End of discussion. Right. Because if you don't... You, you find yourself um, withdrawing mentally and, and... And you can't go there. Right, and you don't want to go there. Right, um, and you've had to learn how to balance that to, out. To, to separate the two. Right. Correct. So from my, from my perspective, from a caregiver's perspective, what advice can I give someone who's maybe just starting in this journey or has been into it and has given up You've packed it in. You can't deal with it. You're discouraged. You're angry. You're frustrated. I can tell you, caregiver to caregiver, you got to hang in there. There are going to be days, yes, there's going to be moments you're going to give up. There's going to be days you say you're going to give up, but you can't give up. If you've made that commitment to that person, if it's your partner, your spouse, your kids... Maybe it's a parent, a sibling that you are committed to taking care of. You have got to keep that commitment, not at an obligation, but because you love them. Like this is just something you need to do. Um, I can say that caregiver to caregiver. If somebody who's never experienced that told me that, I tell them to go jump in the lake. But you know, we can be on the same page and understand. The other thing I can tell you is you have got to take care of you. There are times when he's well enough. I need to have a girl's night out. I need to go shopping with the girls. I need to go out to dinner with the girls. I need to have a craft night with my friends. I need to maybe go binge on YouTube videos. I need to go take a hot bath. 
I need to go for a walk. I need to paint my toenails, whatever. Whatever gives you that moment of breathing space. Now, sometimes I can take a day and go out with the girls because he's really good or we have a situation where my son's around and he can kind of be on call. That's great. Maybe you only have a half an hour. Okay, whatever you can do in that 30 minutes, you need to do it. Don't say to yourself, you know what, I'm okay. You're not okay. You might be okay then, but if you didn't take that 30 minutes and you now have to deal with a worse situation, you're gonna be a wreck. But if you took that 30 minutes and got that refreshment, then when that bigger situation comes up, you will be better. Right. Um, the third thing that I can tell you would be you need to find strength in something other than yourself and the person you're giving the care to. You need to find strength. For me, my strength comes in my faith. Um, I know some of you are not faith-based, and so you need to find your strength in something else. I don't know what to suggest because I don't have anything else to suggest, but you need to find something. And um, if you, I don't know if I can suggest something, I don't know, but for me, it is my faith. I can pray, I can read the scripture, I can do some meditation. I can sing praise and worship. I can listen to praise and worship. I can hear a good sermon. I can regroup. And as Graham says, you kind of reboot yourself. That will help me. Um, I have to be honest, as faith-based as I am, there are days I don't want anything to do with it. I can't go there. And that's okay, too. I'm a human being, and I have my own emotions and my own feelings. But they would be the three things that I would recommend from a caregiver's perspective. From a mom's perspective, and you have kids in the house, and it's your husband, and it's your spouse, and it's their father, kind of the same things. If you were faith-based, teach your kids what your faith means to you and how it applies to them, even in a situation like this. You need to allow your kids to be with their friends. Give them grace. If, they're, if the house is turned upside down because your spouse has had seizures and it, there's tension and there's this stuff. Don't expect your kids to clean their room and do their dishes and do all the normal chores. Listen, let the house go to pot. If you have to, you have to. When you have a situation in your home like that, the kids are stressing. You might be arguing because you're not arguing because you hate each other. You're just arguing because you're both stressed out and we don't know how to, whoa, you know, you get kind of wacky here. So, um, Give your kids the grace that they need. Let them go recharge, reboot, give them more screen time, whatever it takes. Let them do that. Yeah. Um, uh, the one thing that I would add to that, too, is you have told me, too, if I know that I have a, a bad day, it's don't be don't be silly and go, well, I'm I'll gonna, be OK. I'm going to be stubborn and I'm going to be determined and wash the dishes. Right. No. Um, a day like that, take it easy. Right. You know, as you say, stay in my pajamas and, right. and, just, and just chill. It's just, okay. Just chill. When you get home, we'll do it together. Right. Um, because you can't go to work knowing that I'm, I'm trying to get things done. You need to be able to concentrate at work. This is the one thing I've said to him for me. I have to go to work knowing he's safe. And the kids are okay. And to the best of our ability, yeah. things are okay. So there are days where we already know going into it, it's not going to be a good day. And we have a blue recliner chair in our living room. And we'll joke and say, you're on the blue chair today. He just knows. Right. This is the day for him. He's a sketcher to do your sketching, to catch up on phone calls. Right. Maybe we have bills and, you know, calls we need to make and, we want to change our cell phone service. These are the days he can make these phone calls. Right. Um, homeschooling with the kids are done from the blue chair. All that kind of stuff. Maybe it's a day to text the people that we haven't talked to in a while or catch up on emails or binge on TV. Sleep it off all day. That's Listen, right. it is what it is. It's a bad day. Just do what you need to do to get through that day so that hopefully the rest of the week is going to be a better week. The other thing I was going to say with being a parent, a mom to the kids who have to deal with this, 
and it was the first thing that I said for me is teaching your kids that this is their father, teaching your kids that this is their mother. Um, this is the, their sibling or wh whoever it is in the family. We love them in spite of, we don't push them aside. Um, I, I have always told my kids and I've used their dad as an example and I use it for myself because sometimes just, you know, you just don't feel like you fit in or you, you feel fat, you feel too short, too tall, too fat, too skinny. You know, we all have things that we don't like about ourselves. And I told my kids, this is the package that God created. His name is Graham and he has epilepsy. My son, Gavin, his name is Gavin and he has autism. Our other son, our oldest son, Graham, and he has, and he can fill in the blank. We all have something, but my husband would not be the man he is today without the epilepsy. And our family, many people have watched us that really know us. We walk alike, I think. We talk alike. If you know the Wilsons, you know Lynn Wilson from the screen on YouTube. But if you knew the Wilson family and those that are watching us um, probably could attest to this. If you know the Wilsons, they stick together. They work together, they serve together, they take care of each other. Um, our oldest two kids are out and about, extremely busy. But if I picked up the phone right now and said, I need help, they'd be here in a heartbeat, drop everything. I would do the same for them. That's just the way we are. And I really think a lot of that has to do with my husband's epilepsy that we have had to learn to do together. We're probably gonna have to end up, this might, and this part of the video might be in part two, we might have, Mm -hmm. to, I don't know if we're going to split this, but if we had to split this, you're seeing this in the second part. But our family vacations, we couldn't do because of my, we couldn't go hiking. He couldn't handle it. He'd have a seizure. So we had to adapt and to make our kids realize that, well, we can't do it because dad can't do it. I didn't want that attitude in our family unit. Mm-hmm. So to make it a positive, which we've had to learn to do, even mm -hmm. though sometimes my inners were not positive, I had to, my husband would always say, you just be a positive and you'll catch up to it. You do the normal and normal will catch up. So we'd go on vacation and let's say we went away for three days or four days. Everybody got to pick a day that they wanted to do. Right. So if my son wanted to go, let's say hiking, no problem. Mom and Graham are going to go hiking or mom and Gavin are going to go hiking. And dad, didn't you want to read a book that day and just relax? Mm -hmm. And I would make it into, my husband would just know to go along with it. Yeah, I, I did want to read a book. So why don't you read a book at the lodge and I'll take the kids hiking. So they had their day. And then mom likes thrift shopping and craft stores and it drove everybody crazy. But that's mom's day. We're going to be there for mom because everybody gets their day. And then my husband, maybe he wanted to go hiking, but he couldn't go hiking because he'd have a seizure, but he's into gardening. So maybe we'd hit garden centers or a garden show or not my thing, darling. It's not my thing, but it's what he wanted. So everybody got to pick a day and it was a way of us making our family work. Another thing is just adapting when we go shopping and this young man over here will argue with me nine out of 10 times, but I always win most times. You're going to ride a scooter. For him, and I can't relate because I haven't been in that situation of having to humble yourself to say, I will ride a scooter. Go to, you know, if Walmart has one and Target has one, I love it when they have it. You can leave it at the store. I don't have to unload it out of the car, but we have a scooter. So if we go shopping or we go to an event where it's a lot of walking and it's long distance, he can ride a scooter and I know he's safe. We've just made adaptions and our kids just know that this is what we have to do. We always have snacks in the car because dad has to have protein. Well, the kids get cranky, so I have snacks for the kids. So we, we just turned it into a family snack bag because we all need a snack. I don't have to point out because your father needs us. This is why we're doing this. No, 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 no. Because we, as a family, are going on a trip, we need to have snacks. And we've made it into a family event. Everything we do is a family event. Now when the kids come over and we do things, everybody, is dad okay? Dad, why don't you sit here? Everybody accommodates each other. And there's a lot more respect and a lot more love 
but it was a lot of work. I'm not saying it's easy. Me as a mother and as the caregiver and the peacemaker and the organizer, there are days where I go to bed exhausted mentally and emotionally, like I have no brain cells left. And I tell my husband, sometimes my brain hurts from all the thinking I have to do. A lot of it has fallen on me, but I have to trust that this is what my call in life is. And would I change anything? I remember the day I got married, my father took my arm and they opened the doors and here's my fiance at the end of the aisle and I'm gonna walk down in my beautiful wedding dress. This is the day most girls dream of. And my father said to me, you know, you still don't have to marry him. You realize this is a lifelong commitment, marrying a man with a disability and you don't know where that's going to take you. And I looked at my dad and I said, I'm all in. I love him. That's the end of it. And we did. We got married. It's 33 mm -hmm. years. 2020 was 33 years. Did I want to kill him at times? Absolutely. But I think in any marriage, that's normal. But I love him anyway. And um, am I saying life has been perfect? By no means has it been perfect. Has life been rough? Absolutely. Most times when you are married or together with somebody with a disability, there's no money because disability doesn't pay thousands upon thousands of dollars. No, it does not. Um, money is tight. My job doesn't pay a whole lot. I don't have a high paying job. Um, that's just where we are in life and we've just, we're okay with right. that too. So I hit the Dollar Tree and we make it work. Um, I don't know. What else can we tell them? Anything? Yeah. Well, you know, but and that's all comes back to the fact of, you know, that whole concept of silver lining. Yes. You know, because you you can go through life with well, you know, everything else says you know that cloud of well, a dark cloud. Right. You know. So. So, again, my name is Lynn Wilson. You have come to my channel called at home with Lynn Wilson and you are at home with us. This is Graham and Lynn. We're the Wilsons and we have three kids. We have one dog who snored through this whole thing and um, we live a simple life, but in a powerful way. Um, people say to me all the time, Oh, you look so young. Maybe you're laughing on the other side saying she doesn't look so young, but I hear this all the time and I tell them it's a good husband and it's a good life. And that's what I have. I have a great husband and I have a great life. Is it rich and bountiful? And you know, do I have a yacht? Do I have a beautiful home and a three car garage with the nicest cars in the driveway and most up to date cars? And no, I don't have any of that. I shop at thrift shops. We budget our food. We live simple, but we enjoy life every day we count every day a blessing we are privileged to be married to each other we are privileged to be able to say we have been married 33 years and we still are madly in love with each other i think i'm oh, speaking for definitely okay just want to make sure you're still in love with me <laughs> we have three beautiful children we have one snoring dog and we're happy and we're content and if in any way we can encourage you to know that you can do this you can do this. It is not easy, but you can do this. Please leave a comment below. Let us know how we've impacted your life. Have we encouraged you? Do you have a question about epilepsy? Maybe we have an answer that we can answer. Maybe you're a caregiver. It's not epilepsy, but to another, uh, you know, another situation. We're not experts, but we've lived 33 years of this and we've learned how to adapt. So if there's anything we can help you with, we would be glad to. If you don't feel comfortable leaving a comment below because it's a little private and personal, you can check on the description below and you can get my email. Feel free to email me. I sometimes am a few days delayed on getting to the emails, but I will email you back. If it's something specifically for my husband, just put, hey, Graham, I have a question for you. Um, if it's a man-to-man -man question, that kind of a thing that you want to talk to him, that's not a problem. I'll just forward the email on to Graham and he can respond to you. We want to thank you for inviting us in your home. We want to thank you for coming by and spending time with us. 
hearing our story, hearing the journey that we're on. And don't forget, this is Epilepsy Awareness Month. So if you know someone that has epilepsy, just reach out to them. Send them a note, a text, a card, and just tell them that they're special and that you are thinking of them. Thanks so much for joining us, and we'll catch you at the next video.